Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with the Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 9 of the course that's professional communication for managers and session 9 is on effective listening at workplace. So, by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand that how hearing is different from listening. And not just this, I am going to highlight the various elements of effective listening as well as how the process goes on for listening. And not just this, towards the end in the session, I am going to talk about the different factors which tends to impact and make you either an effective listener or an ineffective listener. With this, I will be highlighting the different types of listening as well as what are the traits and characteristics of an effective listener and ineffective listener. And towards the end, I will be highlighting that how you can become an impactful as well as an effective listener. Because again, when we talk about listening, that's one very, very important aspect in a human's personality. Now moving on, deep listening. Yes, deep listening is actually miraculous for both listeners as well as the speakers. The moment we feel like that someone is hearing, rather the moment we feel like that someone is listening to us, then we feel more precious. We feel as if we are worth enough. So yes, it was very appropriately quoted by Sue Patentel, deep listening is miraculous for both listeners as well as speakers and when someone receives us with open-hearted, non-judging, intensely interested listening, our spirits expand. With this, I just want to highlight one very important figure in front of you. Now that's a known fact that we humans, we tend to spend 70% of our day's time in communicating. In a day, a human tends to involve 70% of his time communicating and non-communicating is just the 30%. So I hope now you are able to understand that when you are spending 70% of your time in communicating, again that's uh, like 70 to 75, it can vary a little bit, variations are there, but approximately it's like this. So that forms a very important aspect in your life. And now I, I'm going to tell you that how that 70% of communicating is divided into different aspects. So if I talk about the listening, yes, it forms the major aspect of the communication. That's the 45% of the time you tend to spend either hearing or listening. Yes, I am going to tell you in the later section that how hearing is different from listening. But moreover, people tend to say that it's either hearing or listening. We tend to spend almost 45%, approximately 45% of our time. So I hope now you are able to understand that as a budding manager, you are going to invest most of your time in listening. And just because of that, you need to understand that how and why an effective listeners get easily succeed in the ladder in the organization. With this, I also want to highlight one very important fact. It was a survey which was being conducted by GMAC in 2017, wherein it was found, it was analyzed that 
what an employer is looking in a candidate while employing that person. So, it was found that around 25 major skills were segregated that yes, there are oral skills, there are technical skills, cross cultural skills and like this a list was being prepared and out of those 25 skills, listening skills is again on the second place. So, as an interviewer or as an employer, what you are looking in your managers, in your budding managers, in your interviewees, in your candidates that they should have good and effective listening skills. So, now this again, this particular framework, this particular figure also fosters a very important aspect that as a manager, you really need to have good and effective listening skills. Now, I hope by this time you are able to have this clarity in your mind that listening skills is the most important aspect when we talk in terms of communication. Now, moving further, you will be coming across two terms, listening and hearing. Some people say that they both are same, but no there exists a difference when we talk in terms of hearing or we talk in terms of listening. When it is hearing, we believe that hearing is actually an involuntary process. I will tell you how. When we talk about hearing, what is that? It is a kind of physiological process that some of the sound vibrations, they are going to hit your eardrum and that is how that mechanism follows. Fine. So, what is that? That is an involuntary process. You cannot control that. If some sound, for example, in the backdrop, if some music is going around, yes, it is going to come into your ears and you are going to hear that if your ears are intact. But if I talk about listening, that is a voluntary process. Now, it depends on you that whether you want to listen or not, because listening is more about understanding the things. And until and unless you are using or you are consciously using your mind to interpret the meaning, you cannot. So, that is why we do say that hearing is involuntary in nature, whereas listening is voluntary in nature. Also, we can say that it is a simple physiological process, right? So, when I say physiological process involuntary, so of course, you need not to put much of the effort, it happens automatically. Whereas, when we talk about listening, you need to put conscious efforts to understand, to interpret that what is the meaning, to look for the non-verbal clues. That is how we talk about listening. Not just this, you will be finding that hearing is a passive process because again, if it is involuntary, it becomes a passive process. Whereas, when we talk about listening, the person who is acting as a listener that person needs to be actively involved into the process. If he is not actively involved, then again the purpose of becoming effective listener is not fulfilled. With this, yes, listener is inactive. Now, why I am saying inactive? You might be thinking that the listener is not inactive, that person is active in the hearing. No, he might be inactive, but still the sound is going in his ears. So, there we cannot say that he is the active person, whereas in listening, the listener needs to play a very active role when he is talking about effective listening. Last but not the least one, yes, hearing is one way process. Remember, when we talked about communication, there is going to be a sender, sender needs to encode the things through some medium that is going to reach the receiver and receiver is going to decode it and finally, a feedback will be sent back to the sender. So, here when we talk about hearing, the speaker is sending the message to audience, but there is no feedback. So, we can say that feedback is missing in hearing. 
whereas if we talk about this feedback is there and that too very obvious feedback is there. So, I hope you are able to understand that how hearing differs from listening. So, please do not get into this confusion that they both are same thing, they both are different things. Moving further, yes, now I am going to focus upon that what we mean by listening. I hope you are able to now build up the ground, the basis for listening as we were discussing the differences of hearing and listening. So, listening is what? It is the ability to accurately, accurately receive as well as interpret the message or the information in your own manner. So, you are going to accurately receive and at the same time you are going to understand, you are going to interpret, you are going to attach some meaning and then you will be sending the feedback back to the speaker. So, that is how listening is completed. Until and unless you are not able to develop any understanding, we cannot say that listening has taken place. So, for listening that is very important that understanding interpretation needs to be there. Also, when we talk about listening, the act of listening involves complex process which is more about affective, cognitive and behavioral processes. Now, when I say affective process that is more or less linked with the emotional aspect, the feeling aspect that whether I want to listen to the other person or not, I like that person and that is why I am going to listen to that person. So, somewhere or the other when we talk about listening that has one of the affective component or the affective process wherein you will be attaching your feelings or your emotions wherein you will be looking for the liking and the disliking and based on that only you are going to think about listening to the speaker. That is what is affective process. Next in line is cognitive or cognition. Now, when we say cognitive it is more linked with the brain aspect with the cognition aspect. So, here we talk about developing the understanding, developing the interpretation, the understanding based on our cognition, Co based on our mind maps or the information which is stored in our mind on the basis of past experiences and so on. So, the very first aspect talks about the affective aspect, second is more about the cognition wherein you are using your cognitive abilities to understand, to comprehend, to interpret the information. And the third part of this complex process talks about is the behavioral aspect. Now, the moment you listen, you tend to perform certain actions. So, behavioral is more about the action aspect wherein you are going to perform certain action. So, yes it is all about three things that is the affective aspect wherein it is linked with emotions, feelings, then it is about the cognition aspect which is more linked with the understanding or the comprehension aspect and behavioral aspect is about the action aspect. Also we can say that listening is also linked to the memory. Now, just remember an incident that somewhere you were listening something and in the backdrop some music was going around and the moment now you are hearing the music again, you will be able to memorize or remember the information which you were listening at that time. So, that is why researchers says that it is linked to the memory also. You might have seen that many people when they are reading or writing they tend to listen music. So, somewhere it, they can relate that information what they are reading or writing with the listening aspect and the more they are the then again they are going to listen the song, they are going to memorize that information. So, that is why we do say that listening is very closely linked to the memory of an individual. Moving further, 
I am going to highlight about the various elements of effective listening. The very first element, why I have drawn this A because all these A's are going to tell you about elements of effective listening. The very first A talks about absorb. What do you mean by this? See, the very first principle of listening is that take the information as it is without judging that information, without going for any kind of judgment, without going for any kind of evaluation. Don't go on for evaluating the information when you are receiving it, the very first moment. Just absorb the message the way speaker is telling you. Don't go on for adding judgments to it. So the very first element, the basic element or you can say the basis of listening, effective listening is about absorbing the message as it is. Also when I talk about absorb, the second element is anticipate. Now when a speaker tends to speak something and you as a listener is listening. So absorb the information but, but with that information try to anticipate the meaning, try to anticipate the situations, the context around the information, around the speaker that what is going, what is actually the context of that information. So first I said absorb everything, right? take the information as it is, then it is about anticipating. Anticipating is more about looking for the context, that in what context the speaker is telling you something or in what context you are also listening. So that is what is about anticipating. Now you have got the information, then you are going to analyze it, right? Analysis is basically looking for the interpretation aspect, developing the understanding aspect. So this is another important element that when we talk about becoming an effective listener, you need to analyze the things. Again, you might be feeling that initially I said that absorb the information. Why it is important in the initial aspect that what happens many a time when people listen to the speaker, they start evaluating the things the moment they are listening. They are not even paying attention to each and every aspect, right? So that is what is absorb, anticipate and then you go on for analyzing, adding meaning, adding interpretation, adding understanding. But with that, there is one more element you need to understand that is assimilation or assimilate. Assimilate is again looking with the information you need to look for the non-verbal clues. Now what can be those? As a uh, speaker, if I am saying that as a speaker you are giving some of the non-verbal clues, how you can give it? You can give non-verbal clues either through your body language, through your facial expressions, through your tone, through your pitch and so on. So now as a listener, assimilate the things. With the understanding which you are about to develop, now assimilate the non-verbal clues with it and then go on for the validation aspect that whatever information you are receiving, you are receiving as a listener, whether it is the right one or the wrong one or whatsoever, fine. So this is about the basic elements of effective listening that absorb the information, you should absorb and also the another element talks about anticipating the things, looking for the 
future orientation, analyzing the information and then you can also talk about assimilating the information and assimilation is equally important the way absorb, anticipate and other elements are important. So, these are some of the elements which forms effective listening. I hope if you are able to incorporate and understand these different elements, you will be able to somewhere become more impactful and effective listener. Now next in line, I am going to talk about the listening process. Now listening process is a systematic process. Although you might be finding that all these six stages they are not separate stages, they are quite interlinked stages. You cannot differentiate one stage with the other one because again that process tends to happen in fraction of seconds. You are not even aware of that process, but still it is happening. So that is why I am saying that these are not separate stages, very uh, white and black kind of stages. Okay, okay, one stage will end and then only the second stage starts. No, not like that. These are the stages which are so much intact, so much interconnected, interrelated, overlapped with each other. I will explain you how, how they are overlapped. The very first thing is undivided attention. Now, when you want to become an effective listener, you need to follow this process undivided attention. Do you really think that you can become an effective listener uh, when you are simultaneously listening to different things at one point of time? No, not at all. For sure you are going to miss any of the main information from any of the speaker. So when we talk about listening process, the very first thing is more about undivided attention. That first, you need to pay full attention, you need to have a have focus until and unless that focus is missing, you will not be able to go on for and becoming an effective listener. So undivided attention talks about synchronizing all your energies, all your ideas, all your thoughts to one set, to one point. Again, it is a human mind and we keep on wandering from one place to the other. Our thoughts are like that only. So you also know that at what time you are getting what kind of thoughts. So just stop, just stop them. Tell them that no, at this moment I want to focus on this aspect and then your thoughts will be away from you. This you can do. Again that is somewhere more closely linked with the affective aspect. Because if you want to listen, you need to focus. So yes, it can be linked with the affective aspect, which we discussed in the somewhere that it is more about affective, cognitive and behavioral, right? Now, you are focused, you know that you want to pay attention. Then it is more about hearing. If in case your ears are not intact, or you have some hearing problem then and you are not having hearing aid also for example, then do you really think that you will be able to listen the message? I am not talking about writing and all such things, I am simply talking about the physiological process which is being done by your ear. If that is not intact, then for sure listening is going to be impacted. So with the focus, you also need to have proper hearing. You should be able to hear the things. For example, you are listening to some of the business plan from your senior and in the backdrop some loud music is going around. In that case, you are focused, you really want to listen but at the same time you are not able to hear what your senior is telling you just because in the backdrop loud music is going around. So it is nothing related with your attention, your focus. It is more related with that out of that noise you are not able to hear or 
the speaker who is speaking his volume is very less in that case also you are not able to hear so hearing is again that simple physiological phenomenon is properly taking place or not taking place then once that hearing is done you need to understand the things when i say understand for example you are dealing with the, a french client right now that french client does not know english and for you you do not know french then in that case might be possible that when you start listening to him you were having undivided attention because you wanted to have that deal with you you wanted to crack that deal so you were very much focused you were able to hear also because there are no noises around in the backdrop and he is also very clearly audible to you but you are not able to understand because there is language barrier whatever he is saying he is audible you have the focus but that language you are not able to understand the words which he is saying he or she that person is saying that's not clear to you some people have the tendency to speak in their mouth itself and when they speak their words are not clear so that can also be the another way or some people speak very fast the speaking speed is very fast just because of that you are not able to understand so with undivided attention with hearing you also need to have understanding and now when i say understanding you are able to understand with the understanding the fourth stage is very much overlaying that's what interpreting or interpretation the moment you are able to understand that what the other person is telling you what the other person is speaking what you will do, be doing you will be starting interpreting the message in your own manner based on your own personality traits based on your own perception so that is more about the interpreting once you have interpreted the information in your own manner then you need to go on for evaluating see again i'll tell you dear learners it's not like that every stage you are consciously you are able to focus upon no all these stages are overlapped you will not think okay now i have understood now i will go on interpreting now i'll go on uh, evaluating the information nothing like that that is very quick process very very quick process it takes place swiftly now you will be evaluating this information that whatever this information the speaker is sharing with me is it right or wrong is it valid or invalid is it true or false is it correct for me or incorrect for me so that is what you tend to do and the last stage which most of the managers tends to miss when we talk about effective listening is empathizing people tend to miss this information or miss this stage yes this is again um, somewhere you can put your conscious efforts to become empathize and if continuously you are going to try empathizing with the speaker you will be able to become an effective listener right why i am saying empathizing first tell me that uh, what you mean by empathizing i hope something is coming into your mind empathizing is basically putting yourself in other person's shoes that means as a listener put yourself in the shoes of speaker and then try to think that why this person is sharing this information with me in this manner in this context the more you are able to empathize with the speaker you can become more effective listener but trust me most of the time you will be finding that people are not using this stage or people are not reaching this particular stage but that's one of the most important aspect which you should focus upon 
right. So, that is how the listening process moves on that somewhere you need to have undivided attention where you need to be focused, you need to give your attention to the speaker, then you need to hear it clearly, then you need to understand and after understanding you are going to attach meaning to what you have understood and then you tend to evaluate the information that whether it is good for you, bad for you helpful, not helpful like this you tend to attach meaning and then you should also go on for empathizing. The more you are going to empathize with the speaker, the more effective listener you are going to become. So, this is just a general process for effective listening. Moving forward, I am going to highlight that what are the factors which tends to impact listening. The very first point is lack of concentration, yes, we tend to become or we end up becoming an ineffective listener because we lack concentration. Now, when I say we lack concentration, there are different contexts in which we I can say that yes, we lack con concentration. The very first thing is noise which few minutes back only I said that just because I, will, I want to listen. Right, I want to understand, but in the backdrop some noises are there. Just because of that I am not able to understand what the other person is telling me or I am not able to even hear also, right. Also another aspect that why lack of concentration is there or it hinders you to be from becoming an, in an effective listener. Hearing faster than speaking, I will tell you this that why I am writing this. Now as I said hearing faster than speaking, we tend to speak on an average an average individual tends to speak 100 to 150 words per minute, per minute, right. So, yes it can vary from uh, 100 to 150, 200 to 250 or 150 to 200, but not more than that, right. So, on an average basis it is observed that a person can speak only 100 to 150 words in a minute, but the listener he can think of, he can listen around 400 to 500 words per minute. So, what is happening there is the listener is getting some time where his mind may wander somewhere else. So, as a listener you need to look for that how you can avoid making your mind wandering here and there because you are more capable to listen more words, but the speaker is only able to say less words in some time. So, this is again one very important aspect that people lack concentration because their thinking or their speaking, uh, their listening ability is more in comparison to their speaking ability, right. Now, apart from this why we lack concentration is paying attention to speaker. Now, it can be uh, just because of uh, the age of the speaker, the gender of the speaker, the beauty of the speaker or uh, the kind of experience that speaker is having. So, I am not able to focus on what he or she is speaking, I am simply focusing on his aura, right, how that person looks like, how that person is presentable or presenting himself or herself. So, I am losing my concentration because I am not concentrating on what he or she is saying. So, that is what is lack of concentration that tends to impact listening of an individual. Not just this, the second point is about unequal statuses. Now, in an organization we do have status relationship, right. People are, uh, they are at higher level management, middle, lower level management, right. Now, as a junior, I might not go and tell something to my 
senior because I know that he is not going to listen because we are at unequal status. We do not share similar status. So, unequal status becomes a problem in listening. Also, when I say unequal status, apart from this, the other category can be hello effect. Do you know what you mean by hello error or horn error? I will explain you. See, hello is evaluate a person positively based on one positive characteristic. I am going to tell you again. When we evaluate a person based on his one positive characteristic. For example, I know that a person is punctual, right? Now, I just know one positive characteristic. Now, based on this, I am going to say that the person is obedient, that the person is extremely hardworking, that the person possess good communication skills. So, what is this? That is a hello error. That just on the basis of one positive characteristic, I have evaluated his personality positively. Now, I will be telling you that how it tends to impact listening. Now, what happens? When there is a speaker, I know only one good aspect of him, right? Just based on that, I am listening to him. I am giving full attention to him, undivided attention and I am listening, I am understanding, I am empathizing, fine. But contrary to this, there is another one, horn effect, which is negative evaluation. That means, I am evaluating a person negatively based on one negative characteristic. For example, I got to know that the speaker is uh, somewhere not punctual, right? Just on this basis that he is not punctual. I am thinking, oh, he is not going to have good communication skills, he, he is not going to give us good knowledge about that topic, he is not at all experienced. So, what I did? Now, I am not listening to this person because I have based my decision on just one negative characteristics which is being possessed by him. So, these are certain ways, certain factors which tends to impact the listening, either hello or horn. Apart from this complexes. Yes, when we say complexes, it can be superior complex or it can be inferior complex. I am having superior complex. I believe that, oh, I am from the top management. I know everything and I am not going to uh, focus. I am not going to understand that what problem my employee is having or what good idea that person is having. Now, superior complex is also very closely linked with the closed mindedness. Although closed mindedness is also somewhere impacted by the trust, I will explain you how. First, I am going to complete superior complex. So, superior complex because I feel superior to the other people, to the speaker. That is why I am not listening. It is other way around also. Many a times when we feel that we are inferior or we are surrounded by inferior complex, right? Then also we do not tend to listen because we believe, oh, whatever that speaker is telling, it is not up to my or I am not up to that standard, right? And I cannot understand, I cannot interpret. So, I am going to put a mental block wherein I am not going to listen to what that person is saying. Now, the next point is about close mindedness. Close mindedness is also linked with the trust kind of things, right? I do not trust you, that is why I have put a mental block in my mind and I am not going to listen to you what you are saying. That is what is close mindedness, right? Moving forward, I am going to focus upon some more factors which tends to impact listening. One is poor retention, yes. Many a times it is just poor retention due to which you are not able to go on for doing effective listening, fine. I will tell you how. 
For example, one week back, your manager shared some information with you, right? Now, after one week, he is again going to share some information, some more details about the previous information which he shared one week back. Now, as I said that as a listener, you are having poor retention. So now, when he is dis discussing, when he is sharing the next stage of the information, you are not able to understand, you are not able to comprehend because out of your poor retention, you are not able to retain the previous information due to which now this time listening is ineffective because you are not able to connect the dots. So, this is this can be one reason right which impacts the listening. Also premature evaluations and hurried conclusions. We humans we have the tendency to fill the gaps ourselves and then listen the thing. So, when we are doing this for example, we get we just got to know some half information and I am just adding the things into that picture and closing that picture. So, that is not effective listening because I have done that from my end, I have not looked into the complete picture. For example, your junior just came to you and he just asked that uh, he need to go for a leave due to some urgent reason, right. Now, what you did? You have just listened that he needs leave, you forget about urgent reasons, what you did? You added few things into that particular picture, oh you might be looking for some other job or you might be going for some uh, family function, what you did? That is ineffective listening, right. Apart from that abstracting, abstracting is again a process wherein you tend to make your information from your own interpretations and slants again when we talk about slant, yes. Uh, it is more about when you have less information as a speaker you can go on for slanting, but with people who have more information slanting is one of the negative aspect. Why I am saying negative aspect? Because slanting is more about from the speaker's side that he tends to lie and when the listener is having full information he can caught you, right. So, that impacts the listening. Yes, again uh, people who are not having full information with them you can not be caught, but again that is not a good strategy to go on for. Apart from this cognitive dissonance is another factor which tends to impact your listening. Now cognitive dissonance is basically that uh, somewhere there is incompatibility between your action and your beliefs. So now when you go on with some kind of belief in yours and you listen to the other person to the speaker and the speaker is talking about some contrary belief, some opposite belief. So, that also impacts the listening because I am having some other belief, belief and the speaker is talking about some totally different concept of behavior or belief in the similar context. So, that also impacts the listening. Last but not the least one is the language barrier. Your language is very much different from my language and that is why I am not able to understand or to comprehend. So, I hope the barriers or the factors impacting listening is clear in your mind. Moving further, I just want to highlight few points that is left sided listening in men. You might be knowing that brain is divided into four parts, right. And when I say four parts, it is the left part or the right part. So, we call it as left, left basal, right head and right basal, right. Now, all these four parts are linked with different functioning, right. If I talk about the left head, it is more about understanding, it is more about comprehending, 
it is more about listening. This is more about creative ideas and so on, right. Now, my purpose I just want to focus on the left uh, frontal part or the left head part because it is believed the research says that men they used to use more of the left side of the part. Whereas, women they tend to use a combination of left as well as right side. So, when focusedly that men are using the left part, so they are more effective listeners. But again there are certain comprehensions in this study. Some people say that when women is using both the parts, they tend to become more uh, somewhere good listeners. But again there is one limitation that when you are using different uh, things, when you are focusing on the different things, then you are not able to focus on the listening more. Right? Apart from that listening in left handed people also you know that uh, there are right handed people and left handed people right and when we talk about left handed people it is observed that left handed people they tend to use the right side of their part and majorly they are able to comprehend the language more effectively and more easily in comparison to the people who are right handed people. So, yes this concludes that people who are left handed people they are somewhere more effective listeners because they tend to comprehend language more effectively in comparison to the right handed people. So, these are some of the researchers which tends to come up that yes how or interesting facts they used to tell us about listening. Now, I am going to focus upon that what are the different types in listening. The very first type is appreciative listening. Now, when I say appreciative listening, it is done majorly for the entertainment purpose, right. For example, you are listening to a music. You are able to understand or listen the lyrics, music, everything, but you are not getting into much of the details that who is the singer, who has written the music, who has composed the music, you are not going into much of the depth of that particular piece of information. So, that is why we do say appreciative is appreciative listening is the listening which people tend to do for the sake of their entertainment. Again, yes people who are appreciative listeners, they can focus on the full information also, also I am not denying with this fact, but majorly you will be finding that appreciative listeners are the listeners who tends to listen just for the sake of entertainment purpose, right. Next in line we do have focused listening. Now, when I say focused listening, it is more about when you are looking for some specific information, specific information. The speaker is telling you lot of things, but you are interested into some specific part of that information. You are not much of the, you are not paying much attention, right, but you just want to listen a particular piece of information in that whole scenario. Take example, have you ever been to a railway station? Yes for sure might be. When you are in the railways, when you are at the railway station waiting for your train to come and the train announcement is going around, do you pay attention to all the different trains, train numbers, their platform numbers? I think no. Exceptions can be there, but again if we talk about on general cases, I think the answer is no. We only tend to listen about our train, the details of our train that on which platform number it is going to come, what is the train number, what is the arrival time, what is the departure time and so on. So, what is that? That is somewhere or the other focused listening when we are just looking for a specific information. The third category is about attentive listening. What is attentive listening? 
that cannot miss any information which is shared by the speaker. Fine. In this, you cannot miss any information. You cannot afford to miss any information. For example, your senior is discussing some new change plan with you. Can you afford to miss any of the information? Ki okay, I'll just listen the financial aspect. I won't be talking about the marketing aspect. I'll not listen that what the what are the different features of this change. No, you are required to listen to each and every point. Uh, think that you are sitting in an interview interview room. Can you afford to miss any of the question? Ki okay, I'll not listen the first question. I'll just go on to the third question of the interviewer. No, you cannot. You need to be attentive throughout the time when the speaker is sharing the information. The fourth category is about evaluative listening. Now, when I say evaluative listening, we only listen just to evaluate, just to look for the positive or the negative aspect of a news or of, an, of the information. I am just evaluating that whether it is good for me or bad, whether it is fruitful for me or not fruitful for me, whether it is going to be conflicting with my ideas or not conflicting or in congruence, what it is. That is what is evaluative listening. Last one is empathetic listening. Now, when I say empathetic listening, you are attaching feelings, emotions while listening. You are not listening from your perspective, you are listening from the perspective of the speaker. You are trying to understand and comprehend the message not on the basis of the information stored in your mind, but also from the other person's side you are trying to comprehend the meaning. So, these are the different listening types which you will be coming across. In one or the situation, either you will be going for attentive or focused. See, we cannot say that which one is the better one or the best one. No, there are different situations. For example, if uh, some of your employee is coming to you and discussing his or her problem linked with some of issue in the office, then yes, in that case, you need to be empathetic listener, you need to be somewhere attentive listener as well and that depends that you need, you can be only focused listener, you can be only appreciative because you, that person does not value to you, might be possible you are just listening for the sake of listening, for the sake of entertainment, for the sake of telling or passing his or her information to the other people, alright, it depends on you that what kind of listening you are doing. Moving further, I am just going to highlight that how you can become an effective or what are the characteristics of the effective listener as well as the ineffective listeners and after this exercise you can analyze that what kind of a listener you are. You need to look for the uh, ticks or the not ticked. Do you interrupt in between when a speaker is speaking? If the answer is yes then you are not an effective listener. If the answer is no, then that makes you an effective listener if you do not interrupt. Second thing, you remain patient, you listen to what the other person is saying or you just keep on uh, somewhere you are not able to give your attention to that person. Apart from this, do you make eye contact with the speaker? If the answer is yes, that means you are effective listener. If the answer is no, that means you are an ineffective listener. Do you show interest to what the other person is telling you either through your gestures or through your facial expressions? If you display any patience that you do not want to listen, you feel disinterested, then that makes you an ineffective listener, right? Do you look attentive? Looks attentive, that means do you have a positive body language? when you are listening to the other person or you look like feeling bored or very critical, if the answer is yes to this, then that means you are ineffective listener. Are you able to concentrate on what the other person is telling you 
or your concentration keeps on deviating from one place to other. If it is one place to other, then you are an ineffective listener. The last point which you can talk about is ask open questions or you are talkative. See, there is a difference. If you are asking questions to the speaker, that tells that yes, something was coming to you. Some information have reached you and now you want to get some feedback on that. If you are talkative, unnecessarily you are raising the points which are not linked with the subject content with the information, then that shows that you are an ineffective listener. I hope you are able to understand and you are able to comprehend that to which category you fall into, whether you are an effective listener or ineffective listener. Moving further, yes, I will be just quickly telling you certain guidelines which can make you an impactful as well as an effective listener, right? Whatever we discussed, either in the elements or in the bar, uh, uh, factors impacting listening or what is the, what are the characteristics of effective listener and ineffective listener. With that, you need to focus upon that if you are speaking less and listening more, that makes you more effective listener. Do not be a sponge. What do you mean by this? That means don't go on for taking everything, everything. Everything in terms that many a times what happens that you need not to go on for each and every piece of the information. Look for the relevant part, the important part, the main idea part. Because many a times when we tend to take everything, we tend to lose the main points. So that's what you need to do. Observe body language. Make sure you are having a positive body language. Make eye contact. Good. Uh, do give good gestures to the other person, focus on the speaker, on the speaker simply means here yeah, what he is speaking. I am not talking about that focusing on the speaker about his beauty, about his attire, no not that. What message he or she is telling you, focus on that. Separate the ideas from the speaker, if you have some preconceived notions about the speaker, separate it from listening, right? Listen for what is left unsaid. You can take help of nonverbal clues. Avoid becoming emotional. Don't attach much of the feelings what, with what you are listening. Being empathetic is good, right? That's completely fine. But that does not mean that you are listening out of being emotional. That stabilization needs to be there. Do not jump to hasty conclusions. Empathize with the speaker as well as respect the speaker as a person. The moment you will start following all these steps, you will be becoming an effective and impactful listener. So, dear learners, in this session, I discussed about the difference between the hearing and listening. Also, I focused upon the elements as well as the process of listening. With this, I completed about types of listening and not just this, I also focused upon the factors which impacts the listening and yes, if you will be able to understand and differentiate the good factors and the bad factors, you can become good and impactful listeners. With this, I also talked about the characteristics of effective and ineffective listeners and guidelines that how you can become good and effective listeners. I hope you are going to think all, I hope you are going to inculcate all these basic things in your daily routine so that you can become good and impactful listeners and you can do wonders at your workplace. So, thank you and happy learning.